Following Gigi Jackson's decommitment from North Carolina, the class of 2023 is currently down to just one player. But man, if there's one player you've got, Simeon Wilcher is the dude. What kind of basketball player is he? What is Carolina getting? Sports Illustrated's Jason Jordan is here to help us unpack it all. You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, it's Thursday, August 11th, 2022. Welcome into the Locked on Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shade, and I want to thank you for making Locked on Tar Heels your first listen or your first watch every single day. Please don't forget that we're free and available anywhere you get podcasts. So whether you're watching or listening, go ahead and subscribe right now. If you are watching, please smash the like button and leave some comments on your thoughts about Simeon Wilcher as we chat. It's great to be joined again by Jason Jordan, Sports Illustrated's Director of Basketball Recruiting. Man, it's so good to just have his voice to be able to come on and share insight and intel with us now weekly. And so I hope you're enjoying this uh, as much as I am. And by the way, we'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. Ah, uh, Jason, great to have you, brother. You doing well? Oh, doing great, man. I hope you are. I am. We were just talking about this off air, but we're all trying to beat the heat. Uh, I've got a bit of a reprieve where I'm at today. It's down to 91, so <laughs> that's oh, a win. Man. Yeah, that is a win. <laughs> <laughs> So today we are just we're gonna unpack Simeon Wilcher, his game, how he did recently at Peach Jam, and then we're gonna conclude our conversation today. We got a listener question for Jason in week two. Man, you're you're doing oh, work, wow. son. <laughs> That's great. So where I want to start is just un- unpacking what uh, what Sim brings to the table uh, at this point. With Gigi Jackson's decommitment, it's a one-man class for Carolina in 2023. And uh, as we know, Carolina has racked up game-changing guards in recent years, right? Yeah. You had the the four years of Marcus Page overlapping the four years of Joel Berry, but then you go Kobe White, Cole Anthony, currently Caleb Love and R.J. Davis, Seth Trimble coming in this year, and then Wilcher following up. So right. what right. do Carolina fans have to look forward to? Uh, so they're going to love Simeon. Uh, for sure. He's like a six, six scoring guard um, scores at all three levels and has all the intangibles in that regard. But the biggest thing, I, so Joe Barry, I'll, I'll like, I'll, I'll bring it on home. To <laughs> that y'all can relate to Joe Barry. I, one of the big things I always loved about Joe is that he played with such a fiery edge, right? Yes. So Simeon plays like that, but he's six, six, right? So he has that, <laughs> That motor, he has that guy. He's the guy who's going to scream and get his teammates. But he's just like Joel, super talented in the same right. So he's scoring at all three levels. He can play interchangeable at the guard position. Uh, he played um, – he ran a lot of point guard uh, at Peach Jam, which I guess we'll talk about here in a little bit. But Yeah, yeah, he, for sure. Playmaker extraordinaire, knows how to get a piece of the paint and kick out. Um, but he also knows how to get a bucket. So if you ever need a bucket – Simeon is the man that you want to have the ball in the hands of. So, guy, obviously, I'm very high on, and a guy Hubert will definitely be able to use in a lot of different ways there in Chapel Hill. And and that's so encouraging. You love these guys that it makes them even more draftable, yeah. even more marketable because of For their sure. ability yeah. to do lots of things. And so, if Jason, if you were looking at him in one specific role, more of a pure yeah. point guard, more of a pure shooting guard, or or that combo guard that we see so often now, at, at least at this point in his development, where would you slot him in at? So I would I would say combo. Uh, one of my NBA friends would would cringe that he's like, but just put him out of position, not a combo <laughs> or be a one, right? So I would say uh, if I'm leaning there, and I'm, I I could hear him talking now, but. I would say more of a scorer. He's better when he's getting downhill and looking to be aggressive and um, coming off screens and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, uh, looking to create for his teammates as well. But as long as he's in attack mode, he's at his best. So I would definitely put him in the scoring, you know, at the two. I would definitely uh, – I would gotcha. lean to the two. And then he's 6'6". Yeah. Six, six. I mean, so he's guarding <laughs> bigger guards. He's shooting over smaller guards. And, you know, I mean, you know, he thrives in an offense like that for sure. Yeah. 
we've seen a lot of guards around the country. This isn't just Carolina specific, but who are, you know, we talk about their ability to find teammates, but it's more begrudging, right? Like I'm option one, two, and three. And if I can't pull right. up or get to the rim, okay, fine. I'll find a teammate. Is is <laughs> Sim more like that? Or is he like a more willing uh, passer? No, no, definitely more, definitely more willing, definitely more willing uh, guy. He's going to make the right basketball play. And he's a go. guy who, um, who's really concentrating on like a student of the game. Like, so he's not a guy, I put it like this. So when I need Simeon for, uh, to weigh in on a story or something like this happens. Right. So I'll hit him. I know it might not be that day. Right. Because he has night workouts. And so he's very much a guy who's not going to put something before the process of getting better. Like, so he's very dedicated in that regard. I, I, I actually really commend it. I respect him. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I know he's a guy who may have something coming with his training or something like that. So very, um, very much a serious guy in that regard. So um, definitely a student of the game, willing, always going to make the right basketball yep. play. He's that guy for sure. And and I get that. I had an opportunity to interview his dad earlier this summer for the show and just seems like, man, a good dude, a good family. Yeah. And, and you just love that background, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely. I mean, that's important, right? Um, so a lot of a lot of parents don't know that the 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 coaches are recruiting you too, right? So yeah, you're at the game acting a fool, like a lot of my uh, AAU parents do. They don't know that 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 can cost you, and so it's probably not in his. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, let's be honest. You're still gonna take that five star, even with a crazy parent. But the good thing is, is he doesn't have that, so he definitely has a good foundation and uh, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to you, Sergio, as well. Uh, so w- we've been talking about all his strengths and what we love about Simeon. Where, where Jason, do you see maybe some holes in his game or places where he still needs to grow during his senior year? So uh, in a, a guy in his position, um, he is a willing pat. But, you know, decision-making for guards, uh, I, always, uh, I always lean in that one. So it's always decision-making. Um, I would say he, he definitely could – um, brush up there a little bit and I, you know I, I hate to beat a dead horse but defensively um he's a potential lockdown defender on the wing so i don't know that he'll have the curb that most guards have but there is a curb yeah. Yeah. um and so that's an area that he'll definitely um have to have some growing pains with but you know i don't know that that's uncommon but decision making as a lead guard you know as he transitions i think Further out, I think he may end up being a, a full-time floor general because um, he just has that skill set. And, um, you know, that's kind of where the game is kind of going in that regard. So um, I definitely think that um, as a playmaker, he's still growing. Um, but he's really good right now. <laughs> he's really good right now. That's good. Love that. Now, Simeon's older brother, CJ, is a guard at Nebraska. Right. How helpful is it to have an older sibling who's going through it already? How much does that um, enable you to transition more easily to the college game? Oh, it, I mean, it's uh, it's it's big, right? So you see uh, the pitfalls and you can uh, <laughs> learn from things first. And, and a kid like Simeon is definitely a guy who's going to soak it up. Like he's not a typical teenager like he's 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 different like he he he's a guy who's definitely gonna um not only retain knowledge but i apply the knowledge that that he gains so um he's way more mature than most of uh most teenagers that i come in contact with i'll say it like that <laughs> that's a great way to say it. the best way <laughs> the best way that won't get me in trouble so yeah i, I, I <laughs> Totally hear you, man. That's very diplomatic of you. Well done. So uh, let, let's project ahead to this time next year. Let's assume a world. I'm just projecting. Let's say Caleb Love leaves for the NBA. RJ Davis comes back for his senior year, you know, height issues and things like that. And then you got Seth Trimble, who will be a sophomore. Given all that, what role do you see Simeon Wilcher playing in the backcourt his freshman year? Well, I, I mean, he's, he's too good to sit. So, um, you know, somebody got to go. <laughs> I, look, put it like this. I don't know. I Listen, I love RJ. Lo- I, I think Seth is super underrated. Like, I really like Seth. Um, you know, but Simeon's going to play. And Simeon's going to play a lot. Um, so, you know, I don't know that. I don't know that those, you know, it's, it's, it's a new, you know, it's different 
as of, we got to see. You got to see how things shake out. I know, you know, RJ could not be there, you know, whether that's the right move or the wrong move. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But um, absolutely. You know, I'm, so that, that those kind of things um, will obviously have to come into play. But at the end of the day, this is, this is what I can tell you. <laughs> Hubert Davis is going to play Simeon Wilson. <laughs> you, know, you hear me? <laughs> He's going to be on the court early and often. I yeah. love that. Yes, absolutely. Wh- whether he's in the starting lineup or not, right. he's going to play starters minutes, I think is the bottom sure. line here. And he's yeah. fine with that. Like he, he like to more the, to the maturity part that we were talking about before. Um, he knows he's going to be productive. I mean, you yeah. can't coach six, six, three level scoring consistently. You can't coach it. <laughs> Yep. And it, and it might not be as much in November or December, but we look up in February and March and dude's going to be on the court. Yeah. A ton, a ton, a ton. Well, part of uh, one of the reasons people are so excited about Simeon Wilcher is because of his recent ridiculous showings at Peach Jam. We're going to talk about that in just a minute after I tell you all about Built Bar. If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor. Delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right, Built has done it again. I want to introduce you to your new favorite cookie dough chunk puffs. They have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, covered in 100% real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it. Plus, it's healthy for you. It's only 160 calories, and it's got a whopping 15 grams of protein. Run to Built.com to snag a box for you and the family right now. It's going to be the perfect treat. Or, you know, if you want it for yourself, you can just find a perfect hiding spot and hoard it there. Uh, What's so great about Built is that all of their bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. You're going to love the new uh, cookie dough chunk puff. Whether you need a snack for your workout, a late night treat, or just need to grab a quick bite, Built is the perfect protein bar. Ditch the calories, fat, and sugar and grab yourself a Built bar. Go to Built.com and use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Again, that's promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off at Built.com. Listen, Jason, I am a Georgia boy. I love a peach. It's my favorite fruit. And man, this time down in uh, in the Augusta area every July, at least since uh, pre-COVID and post-COVID, we get the peach jam. All the yeah. best players, uh, best high school players in the country are there. And our man, Simeon Wilcher put on a show uh what what are just your takeaways your thoughts from his performance uh well i mean it's one thing you know to shine in high school is one thing to shine even in the eybl but peach jam is just that's the one like that's the one and you if you want to leave your mark if you want to leave people um talk we still talk about um i still talk about we at peach jam we're like remember that always comes up remember trey young remember um <laughs> Michael Porter, remember his performance here, you know, all those different things. And, and Simeon definitely left his mark um, at Peach Jam this year, averaging, I think, 18, 5, 5, and two steals. I mean, my <laughs> goodness. <that's, laughs> and it was like that, too. I mean, I watched like uh, four or five of his games, and it was like, it, w- it was, you know, when I say like that, I mean, he, they were, he got style points with the, you know, it was, it wasn't like, uh, you know, rotate, rotate, open jumper. No, <laughs> he was going to get it. He was going to get it. Like, and he was playing with all the emotion and fire and energy. I mean, um, just super impressive. Um, definitely one of the five best players I saw at Peach Jam. Wow. hundred percent, hundred percent. I had this talk while we were there. I mean, that's in my, you know, among the coaches, and among like media guys, that's always the first one you're like, oh, what's up, man? I haven't seen you in a while. Who's the best player you've seen here? Who's <laughs> 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 the top three? Who's your top three? And so Simeon's the name that, you know, I heard in everybody's top five. Okay. Out of curiosity, who were some of the other names in that conversation? I like Cooper Flag, uh, the Boozer Kid. Um, uh, I would say uh, Trey Parker, who you guys have reached out to. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would say those, uh, Justin McBride was really good. Um, Mackenzie Mbako was brilliant. And uh, Robert Dillingham played really well, too. Okay. I, 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 I don't, don't, don't be mad, but Gigi Jackson played well, too. <laughs> he did. 
You, you play well. <laughs> But you know, which is you. You can edit that out if you want. But you no, keep we're we're keep it all stays in. Listen, Carolina fans are throwing their phones because of Dillingham, and then they're throwing their other phone because of Gigi. So yeah, I it's didn't all even good, tell, I didn't even tell you that Caleb Foster and Jared McCain played well too. Those are Duke guys. I know. I know. I know. No, it's all good, man. All good. All good. All good. Yeah. We got to bring it up. So yeah, c- coming out of Peach Jam, I mean, Sim uh, was named on the first team along with I think it's a ten person. Yeah all circuit first team okay. and, and right on uh, all those stats you said were just spot on with that. And so, I mean, we're, is he a legit triple double candidate? I mean, Carolina has, I believe three in all Carolina history, triple doubles. Is, is he as a six, six guard? Like, is that a lot a possibility for him? Me, meaning can he get a triple double? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. He definitely can get a triple double. I mean, he's, he's just so that's what I'm saying. Like, he impacts the game in so many different ways. Like, he's going to put his nose in there and get those seven rebounds and, and you know, threaten to get 10 or 11. He's that guy, right? He's going to score. I mean, that's that's a given. Um, but he's also, like I said, he's developing as a playmaker, and he's really good now. And I think uh, with his work ethic, sky's the limit. He has a high ceiling, high ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And that's, you know, I think for Carolina fans, they look back over the past five years or so, and Cole Anthony's probably the best rebounding guard the Tar Heels have ever yeah. had. Just yeah. Cole, ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, is, is he on that type of level rebounding like Cole Anthony did? Yeah, I mean, obviously they did it different. Cole's shorter, um, sure. so sure. it's a little easier for um, for Simeon, at least from that from the height perspective. Right, right. Uh, as we know, Cole's a bulldog, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, but he kind of fits that mold too. Like he's a, he's a dog out there on the court, you know, Simeon plays like that with that type of, like I said, Joe Barry, the, the strong man thing. Yeah. Refusing to he's lose. Like, yeah, absolutely. Like that. Yeah. So he's, he's a warrior. They're going to love him there, man. That's great. And, and one of the important things is the consistency, right? Of putting in right. these performances time after time after time. So yeah. coming up this weekend, uh, Wiltshire will be playing in the Under Armour Elite 24 game yeah. in the Chicago area. And so yeah. um, coming off of that Peach Jam experience, what what does he need to do to just show, hey, that's not just me putting up a show at Peach Jam in front of everybody. Here's what I'm going to do again to impress you all. Yeah, so it's different in that setting, right? This is kind of like an all-star sure. game. It's kind of yep. the guys that the, the uh, defense will be a little scared. <laughs> he might be looking for some D. But the thing is, you know, I expect him to be, you know, one of the, you know, in the top three scorers for sure just because, um, I mean, if I can score with the, the greatest defenders at my level on me, I mean, if you're going to back off this shot. What do you think I'm going to do then? <laughs> so, you know, and he's a guy who's very assertive um, offensively. So I expect him to play well there. I definitely expect yeah. him to play well. Yeah. Yep. Just keep making his name known. Now, yeah. uh, we had a, an interesting development recently. Last year, we saw R.J. Davis for Carolina and A.J. Griffin from Duke on the same court together battling it out. And they had been high school teammates at Archbishop Stepanak <laughs> there in New York, although separated by a year. However, right. Mr. Jason Jordan, we have an interesting development for Mr. Simeon Welcher, who Welcher yeah. who plays at Roselle Catholic in New Jersey. Can you unpack that a little bit for us? Yeah, so I hear he's getting a new teammate. He's, he's getting a new teammate. He is, and um, uh, Mackenzie Mbako, who is headed to Duke. So they'll be the teammates. I think that might uh, there might be a few gentlemen bets um, throughout <laughs> the season. A couple of uh, braggadocious moments um, for both of them, I'm sure. And then, you know, I'm sure they'll, they'll be going for their teams uh, in February and March. So that should make for some, uh, some fun locker room time for those two, for sure. I would imagine. So I would imagine how, like as teammates, how do you do that when you spend this whole year together in high school and then now you're going to still be in proximity to one another, just 15 minutes apart or whatever. But now like you're dudes off the court, but Man, what like do you use that to your advantage on the court? Like if I'm if I'm Simeon, I'm like, dude, I know McKenzie's strengths, but I'm gonna go attack where he sucks. Like, how, you know what I mean? Like, do you use that to your advantage? Yeah, I don't know that they think about it. Um, I don't know that they, you know, they're act proactively thinking about it. I mean, maybe, maybe you know <laughs> beforehand, but you know, I think at the end of the day, they just know what it is when we get on the court. But those guys are friends. Like these kids yeah. are. They don't dislike each other. I mean, I think maybe a couple of them do, but you know, I think um, <laughs> by and large, like those two, they'll be teammates. I, I know they're they're tight even now. So, yeah. Um, 
they'll probably hang out on Franklin Street, you know, when they're not playing. That's right. Um, you know what I'm saying? Go to yeah. Time Out and get a bur- get a um, chicken sandwich or something like that. Yes. Uh, so, you know. But yeah, I, uh, on the court, you already know what it is. I'm, I'm coming. You know home. what it is. Man, can't wait. That'll be a lot of fun in the 2023-24 season. Well, we're going to move into our final segment, segment, and we've got a listener question for Jason. Man, right out of the gate, your second appearance, people (laughs) already want to know. So here we go, Jason. Here's the question. This comes from Esther Poza on Twitter at Dr. It's it's either Dr. Palusa or Dr. Pell USA. I don't know, Esther. What you know? What's the story behind that? But here is Esther's question, and this is a great one, Jason. That uh, a lot of people might not know the behind the scenes to. And right. she says this: I have a question regarding recruitment. Is there a strategy for balancing offers versus available scholarships? It seems that we, meaning North Carolina, have a lot of offers out there for the twenty three twenty four class. What if there are more offers than spots? So for, for everyone, if you look at Carolina's recruiting board, the 22, the 23 class that Simeon is part of only has a couple offers out there. But if you look at the offer sheet for the t- class of 24, Coach Davis has just a ton. It's like scattershot. And so I think that's yeah, it's just making it rain. So this is Esther's question is, what, what happens uh, in that scenario? How do you balance it? So... So it is a great question, right? So uh, it, it, that's what they call, coaches call casting a wide net, right? So um, at the end of the day, uh, if you want uh, sea bass and all the sea bass are swimming over here, um, you know, you're going to just throw your net out. And if you grab three of them, three of the 10, you won, you know? So um, so they're all for eight. Let's say they offered eight, right? They know that all eight are not coming, right? So it's kind of a thing, and they're, and they're very upfront too. Now, you know, it sounds like, oh, come on, man, you how you gonna offer him, and then you took him, but they're aware. And uh, I know Coach Davis is a very much an upfront guy, so yeah. it's very yeah. much like, hey, you know, we're we're recruiting this kid, but you know, we really want both of you, but it's a situation where we can't take both of you, you know. So if you're really serious about coming here, and I've heard this multiple, I mean, I will tell you. I've heard I won't use the school. <laughs> I've heard, and I'm talking, I'm talking five. This is over the last 10 years. See, because I, okay. I know people's minds will be turning. But um, <laughs> I've heard, I'm talking McDonald's All American for a fact, right? From, you know, this is in my personal conversation. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to go to school A. Well, this is, I mean, the McDonald's on American, right? So you're like, yeah, they're taking him. No, they said, eh, hold on. Because, <laughs> because we think we're going to get player B. Yeah. But hold on. And then they got player B and they said, can't take you, McDonald's all American. Player you know? A. So, yeah. yeah. Player A. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, so they'll put it out there, but they they're always up front. Even with that in that scenario, they did tell them, you know, it's between yeah. you two. It's not it was bad because the kid was like, Well, I thought it was whoever committed first. And like, yeah, it is, but you don't understand you're on tiers. So you weren't the top tier, right? You were the second tier. And so you found that out when now they may not be that up front. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So yeah. they may not be like just so you know, you're not as important as that kid. So they're not going to be that transparent. Sure, sure. They're going to be honest and say, hey, we love both of you guys. You know, obviously you're great players, but we can't take both of you. Um, um, so, you know, whatever you're deciding, I respect that process. Um, but, you know, we have to do what's right for us too. And, you know, we're willing to wait it out. But, you know, if we get some commitments, then things could change. And that's how they present it. So um, I hope that answers the question. Absolutely. I, I would say it does. Esther, hopefully, yeah, let us let us know. And Jason, <laughs> a follow-up for me with that is it seems like this calculus is even more difficult now because of NIL, because of the one-time transfer rule, where yeah. it's like, man, we know, let's, let's just project Carolina has, let's say, four open scholarships right. for the next recruiting class. Right. Um, Coach Davis has already shown that he's going to be active in the transfer portal. Last year, getting Dawson Garcia, Brady Manick, and Justin McCoy. This year, getting Pete Nance. 
Um, and so he, he's going to do that. And we actually, that's another conversation I want to have another day yeah. uh, about balancing transfer portal and, and uh, high school recruits. Mm-hmm. But um, how even more so with throwing all these scholarships out, but then also knowing we don't know who's going to leave yeah. and we don't know who's going to be available in the transfer portal. So is, right. is that accurate to say that it's even more uh, of a difficult roster management process now? Absolutely. Um, because, and, but, you know, I'm going to shoot the coaches some bad work. They're, they're all learning on the fly. I mean, this, this transfer portal thing is, is very new. It's only like a year. Yeah. Like this, it was last year too, but this is the year that it really blew up and it was like, Oh goodness. You know? So um, I think all coaches are holding out spots for that portal, you know? So, and, and it is what it is. And, and they're upfront about that too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it really worked out for you guys. <laughs> you know, Brady was pretty good. You know, he I think did he, all right. a, he <laughs> hit like one or two shots. So, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I think he'll definitely it, he'd be very smart to. I think every coach in the country is holding out at least yeah. one or two yeah. spots for transfer yeah. portal. Yeah. And then it'll, I feel like it will get a little bit easier once all the the set of players that have an extra year of COVID eligibility right. possible, once they phase out, which we're just a year or two away from now, yeah. that'll yeah. make it a little bit easier because then you're not yeah. wondering like, hey, what if Leaky Black comes back yeah. as he did? Yeah. Because this year for the first time, for those who don't know, coaches have been told by the NCAA, and I've talked to multiple head coaches around the country about this, that now those those COVID players count against the scholarship quota again starting now. And so they're having – man, it's just – I wouldn't want to mess with that, Jason. How, like, what yeah. – like, does it does it keep you up at night? How do you do it? Yeah, it's it, – yeah, it's tough. It's tough to keep tabs on all that. Don't get the coaches started. Like, they <laughs> – they keep Tylenol on hand. I'll just say it like that. But, yeah, I definitely hear a lot of venting uh, from that specific thing from different coaches. Okay. Yeah. Man, that's great information. Thank you so much, Esther. Hope uh, Great, great question. Thank you for submitting it. And uh, would love to talk with you more about that if you need more explanation. Jason, thank you for all your insights on Simeon. Thank you so much for all your insight about scholarships and recruiting and all that. Cannot wait to chat with you again next week. Indeed, man. Look forward to it. That's it for today's episode of Locked on Tar Heels. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks as always to Jason Jordan for being here and giving us his wisdom and insights. Can't wait. Tomorrow we're going to talk some football. Got an injury update for you and uh, some news on the preseason coaches poll. Thank you for joining me. Great to be on Locked on Tar Heels today, as it is every day. If you haven't already, subscribe to the show, smash the like button, and leave some comments. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked on Heels. You can follow Jason at Jason Jordan SI, and you can follow me at Isaac Shade. By the way, get more on the ACC by making Locked on ACC your second listen. Host Candace Cooper and the local experts of Locked on take you around the conference in 30 minutes, five days a week. It's great to have been with you today on Thursday, talking Carolina hoops and specifically Simeon Wiltshire. Cannot wait to see this guy in Tar Heel Blue. And I want to remind you, it's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. Until tomorrow, peace. Peace.